Let's get ready to rumble! Yeah, so, um, common opponent that's important between Anthony Joshua and Marius Watt is Constantine Arich. Joshua stopped late in 2014. Joshua dealt with him in three. Scored a knockdown. Marius Watt took him on tonight. Took on Irish tonight. And he did what he had to do. He stuck the jab on the guy. His power doesn't look obvious. Because he's quite an uprightish sort of um, fighter. And he doesn't turn his body into his shots. And no disrespect to anybody. Some of you just, um, your thought process is so basic, you know, like you assume these big heavyweights, and I've heard it said so many times, well, the heavyweights t today are too big for Ali and the Lewis's, they'd kill them. You're not factoring in is that, you see, when you get boxers who are six foot seven, six eight, it's hard to get the majority of your body weight behind punches because punching takes a whole lot of motions from different parts of your body legs shoulders for example and for them big guys it's hard to coordinate it all in one smooth motion you know only exceptional big guys can do that exceptional big guys you see how Anthony Joshua He's a big guy, six, 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 seven. Two-handed attacks. He's well coordinated. Deontay Wilder, fast jab, big right hand. He can get snap and power behind his shots. Vladimir Klitschko, the left hook, the left jab. There's not a bunch of Vladimir Klitschkos walking about the planet, you know. So um, what got the job done in round six? I tried not to fall asleep through some of it. Arich didn't have much to offer, really. He didn't have much to offer. Um, it looked like he could have went further than the six rounds. It looked like it could have carried on. Some said controversial stoppage. No, not really, because Arich wasn't landing anything. See, stoppages don't have to be a concussive, punch-landed sort of thing before it happens. No. If you're not competitive, then the referee will likely stop the fight. If you're not competitive, if nothing's coming back, he'll likely stop the fight. And that's what happened here. You know, Wack landed some good shots. He landed a left uppercut and a couple of other shots. And um, Aurich looked like he was looking for a way out. He didn't complain when the fight was stopped. And the fight was terminated right there. A lot of people are going to say that Anthony Joshua is just going to breeze through Marius Wok because, you know, he didn't look impressive. And Joshua blew out the same opponent in half the time. Very conclusively. There's certain fighters, they don't look impressive. You know, they literally fight down to the level of their opponents. But Wok, as far as I know, has never been on the floor. Never been on the floor. And um, this new box rec format, I'm still working it out because I'm trying to see how much chaos he's got. It says 53%. And I know I should not, I, I should be able to convert that to how many chaos he's at. I probably could, but I'm not good at maths. You know what I mean? Some of us ain't that good at maths. So when you put that there, it don't really help. It doesn't really help. I'm not that good at maths. You know? Okay, I can see it. 17 chaos. Wax stopped 17 out of 31 opponents. 17 out of 31. Which gives him a 53% KO ratio. Anthony Joshua's never fought anybody this size in the pros. He hasn't fought nobody with that reach. And Wak is very tough. He's extremely tough. We saw him take Klitschko's best shots. And stayed in there. Lost the UD. But he stayed in there. Even seemed to have Klitschko on unstable legs. The punch was an obvious what. Wack hit him with to have him like that, but he did it. Wax actually went the distance quite a lot. Gobenga Alokon, his last opponent this year, took him 
the 10 rounds duration. He went six against Travis Walker. He went the full eight against Kotajic, Samir Kotajic. He went to this with Klitschko. And after the Klitschko fight, he had his sabbatical because he was taking drugs. He was taking PEDs. It would be dangerous to overlook Maris Wuck, in my opinion. It would be very dangerous. No obvious skills stand out. No obvious punching power stands out. No snapping jab stands out. Sometimes he pours with a jab. But he's tough. And I was once told any man over 15 stone who is landing on your jaw is going to be a threat. <laughs> I'm probably not going to argue with that. And he weighs way more than that. He didn't look in the same type of physical condition that he was when I saw him when he fought Vladimir Klitschko. You know, that could be the juice. <laughs> Without the juice, he might not look like an elite athletic specimen. Maybe so. But he did give Klitschko a better fight than Povetkin, and he gave Klitschko a better fight than Bryant Jennings. But he got the job done, and he got the stoppage, and he's won his last four bouts since the Klitschko defeat. You know, three KOs out of four since the Klitschko defeat. It's quite light on his feet at times. Not, don't get me wrong, he wasn't bouncing all around the ring, but, you know, when he had to make a few steps and maneuvers, you know what I mean? He wasn't, he wasn't the slowest, dude. He wasn't the slowest. And that's the thing. When he comes in there, he needs to come in shape and challenge Joshua for superiority of the jab. He has to contest the battle of the jab. Don't just go in there and try and bang him out because, you know, you're nervous that if it goes a few rounds, you might get tired and he's the prospect. No, no, no. If he goes in there behind the jab and the right hand attack, he has to let the fundamentals see where it can take him and he'll go from there. He'll go from there. Let's see if he can provide Joshua any type of test. I certainly am not going to be amongst the British cheerleaders saying, yeah, Joshua's going to blow him out in one. No, 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 no. I think you have to show this guy a little more respect than that. He's an inch taller than Joshua, and they both have the same reach, 82 inches apiece. Joshua, to me, he technically looks better. He does technically look better. He's more coordinated. He's faster, and unless his chin lets him down, he wins this fight. Yeah? I'm not worried about if he can go eight rounds or ten. Yes, he can do it. All pro boxers can go that distance. It depends on what pace and what conundrums are being set. It's not a matter of just numbers. Yeah? Hopefully he keeps his chin tucked down nicely, goes about his work, and he should be prepared to go the distance. You know? He gave Klitschko a good fight because Klitschko is used to pushing down on shorter guys. What was so tall, Klitschko didn't have the option. He couldn't push down in his neck. He just had to, he had to bang it out and fight. You know, and use his defense if he wanted to take a breather. He had to move and use his jab more rather than clutch or clinch. Klitschko doesn't throw body shots and that enabled Wuck to get through the 12. Because Wuck was feeling the pace, but there was no body work there to accelerate the deterioration. Anthony Joshua does throw to the stomach. And he needs to be looking at that because the target is there. Wuck does leave that target there. He's very upright. So I'm looking forward to this one, seeing what Joshua can do. There you go.